Okay, so we've just finished talking about Snell's law and we did an example where we had an interface between air and sapphire that was curved with a spherical surface. Um, and you could go the rest of your life just using that and it would work, but it quickly gets out of hand. Um, each lens has two surfaces and often we're dealing with, um, we're just dealing with uh, parallel beams of light. Um, and we care about where the, the, the lens focuses that parallel beam of light, i.e. it's focal point. Focal point. Um, the focal length, oops, focal length of a lens is the distance from the lens to the focal point. So if we have a lens here, let's draw our rays. Um, we have a parallel beam entering it. What we mean by a parallel beam is we mean that we have several rays that are parallel to each other. Now those rays may be entering at an angle, but they're parallel to each other. So for now, let's just draw them straight into the lens like this. And then the lens, and ideally, right, this is what they're designed to do, is to take this and focus it to a point like that. So I drew the point first, because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get them all to meet at the same spot. Um, so all of these rays meet at the same point, and that distance is the focal length of the lens. And this is the focal point. Okay, great. So um, rather than doing ray tracing for each one of these lenses, right, we could go in here and be like, all right, what's our angle here, that theta, then that theta, and then that theta. All right, then we do this one and this one. We can assume that the lens is well made. Um, and we can make a couple other very important assumptions. If we assume small angles, in other words, um, these angles at the interface here, so remember how we talked about when um, light hits a, a surface, we have theta one and uh, theta two. As long as theta one and theta two everywhere is small, then n one sine theta, n two sine theta, n two sine theta two, um, can be approximated by n1 theta1 is equal to n2 theta2. Remember, this is in radians. Now, this is basically the small angle approximation, which you've learned about in several different classes, I'm sure. Um, the small angle approximation. And it works better the smaller that theta is, right? Uh, as soon as theta gets within a few degrees, the errors start to really add up. I think I saw somewhere that like, you start getting 1% errors after three or four degrees. I can't remember now exactly, but. Um, so we, we've made this assumption here of small angles. The other thing we're gonna assume is that it is a thin lens, um, i.e. the lens is thin compared to the distances to point sources. So we mentioned this briefly in your first assignment, how I want you to assume the lens is thin when you calculate the path of the ray through it. What that means is that when the ray comes through this lens here, so we start it off, it's going to bend, remember, into the, the higher index of refraction material, which would be the lens. So it goes down. And then we do, oops, we do the same thing here. And it goes like that. So this distance in height, this h, has to be small compared to the other distances in the problem. Um, in practice, what that means is that, um, you know, if your lens is, uh, well, lens is and focal lengths, right? 
So if your focal lengths are on the order of uh, 300 millimeters, this distance in here needs to be like less than a millimeter or so. It needs to be very small. And in practice, they are. If you have, if you are, um, uh, if you are satisfying the, the small angle approximation with your rays, then the, the amount that they deviate is from their path is not going to be very small. And so the change in height within a lens, in most lenses, if they're if they have a small amounts of curvature, so if they're not, if the radius of curvature here is um, relatively large, R is greater than um, probably 200 millimeters. As long as R is relatively large, then your rays are not gonna deviate that much with um, at all within the lens. So as long as you're holding to the small angle approximation, you're probably satisfying the thin lens um, approximation as well. But what it means is that we basically ignore this change in height. What we do is we uh, apply Snell's law twice, once here and once here. And we assume that the ray actually just translates in Lee and doesn't change height in here at all. Um, and instead, we approximate the lens as a single plane where it has two deflections at the same spot, OK? All right, if we do that, we apply those to a bunch of rearranging, we get the lens maker's equation. What the lens maker's equation says is that one over F, so one over the focal length of the lens is equal to N minus one times one over R one minus one over R two. Yeah, so, Knowing the radius of each, this is R1, this is R2, so let's make them capital, R1 and R2. So the, knowing the radius of curvature of each lens and the index of refraction of the lens itself, N, um, knowing those three things, we can plug them in here and solve for the focal length of the lens. Sign convention on this is crucial. Um, so the way you get this right is assume that light is coming from the left, okay? Light is coming from the left and going to the right. Um, and you draw a, uh, draw a vector from the cur the surface, the, um, spherical surface of the lens towards its center. So let's do that this way. So here we have, here's one. And here is two, right? So this, and then we start from the left and go to the right. This is R1 and this is R2. If the, if the radius is pointing in the negative X direction or negative Z, whatever the negative direction to the left, then that radius is negative when we plug it in. If it's, if it's pointing to the right, then it would be positive. So looking at this uh, lens right here, we have, uh, R1 is equal to 150 millimeters. R2 is equal to 50 millimeters. These are not drawn to scale. Um, and let's plug it in and see what happens. So we have one over F is equal to N minus one, one over R1 minus one over R2. So now let's plug in all of our, the things we know, because we know N, we know R1 and we know R2. 1 over f is equal to n minus, oh, we know n. Let's, let's plug that in. Is equal to 1.512 minus 1 times 1 over r1 is going to be 150 millimeters. And it's a negative because it's pointing in the negative direction, minus 1 over negative 50 millimeters. Great. So we plug that into our calculator, invert it, and we get that our focal length is equal to 146 millimeters. Plug that in here, 146 millimeters. Um, let's do another example that highlights, again, the direction that these radii um, are in. So we have now a uh, negative focal length lens. Um, and 
we have the uh, two radii of curvature that are the same, 150 millimeters and 150 millimeters, and it's still the same material, BK7. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw draw a arrow from the curve the curved surface towards the center for both of them. Now the one on the left points in the negative direction, the one on the right points in the positive direction. So that means when we write our equation, one over F is equal to N minus one, one over R one minus one over R two. One of these R's is gonna be positive and one's gonna be negative. See if you can fill this in before I get to it. All right, so I'm gonna rewrite, plug in everything now. F is equal to, and when I say uh, fill this in before I get to it, you should be pausing the video plugging it in and see if you can calculate it before I get to it. Remember the uh, active learning stuff is super important for um, retaining this and not having to do a whole lot of extra work. Okay, so um, N minus one is, well, it's BK7, so it's 1.512 minus one times one over, now our R1 is 150 millimeters, but it's in a negative direction. So it'll be negative 150 millimeters minus one over, and in this case, we have plug in a positive 150 millimeters. And when we toss that into our calculator and solve it, we get a negative 146 millimeters. Cool. So that's the lens maker's equation. It allows us, given the radii of curvature of a lens to um, approximate the focal length of that lens. Um, now I keep saying approximate. We're going to find out that this is not terribly accurate. All right, but we're going to do some practice on this first. So 